All right, so I am currently trying to remake a Nerf gun. Hmm, how do I, how do I? I'm trying to convert a racing drone into a Nerf gun. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so what, do, what kind of controls do we need for the, for the gun? Okay, so I specifically just need two controls. One, to turn on the Nerf motors, because it's an electric Nerf gun, so it has like these counter-rotating motors. Secondly, I have a servo that's connected to it, so whenever I flip that switch, the servo starts spinning. It's a continuously spinning servo. And servo setup on Betaflight is kind of a pain in the ass, but actually you already got the servos working before you called me, right? Thanks to your videos. Oh. <laughs> Dude, resource remapping was like so confusing to me. I, oh, the whole like flight controller in general is super confusing, but I feel like through this whole process, I, I understand how flight controllers work now and what all the different like pins and pads do. Yeah, and so powerful. Resource remapping is the most powerful feature of Betaflight that so many people don't know exists. Because you can literally just make your flight controller do almost, but not quite everything. Yeah, so, so what I ended up doing was I took the LED strip pad, the LED underscore strip pad, and I just, I remap that to be a servo, and then the servos tab in beta flight, I just hit that to be on my aux three switch. Mm -hmm. It was surprisingly easy, and then it just worked, which almost never happens yes, in anything I, I do. Nothing ever I just agree. works. So then you, <laughs> the next thing you got to do is you got to drive the motor, and yeah. like the, the most obvious way to do that would be to use something like a real pit, but you don't you don't have a real pit, right? That's I mean, yeah, that would be too Maybe in hindsight, I probably could have gone down the real pit route, but. I wasn't really thinking that far ahead. And I was like, a relay, that will work. Because the idea behind a relay is that I just put a little bit of power into one side and then it just closes the connection on the other side. So you can have a lot of amperage going through the one side without it ever like touching the other. Yeah. yeah. The only problem is I need five volts to activate that. Okay. I haven't figured out how to actually get five volts, switchable five volts. That's an important caveat. Because I could just power it through the, the ground and 5V pads on the flight controller. Okay. But then I don't know how to turn those so, on and off. So Betaflight has a function called pin IO, which okay. by using the pin IO function, you can cause any pin to arbitrarily go high or low. So, Will those be able to put out five volts? Well, that's that's I, a good question. Let me let me research it and I'll get back to you and we'll see if it works. Work, work your CLI magic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now the first thing we got to do anytime we work with a flight controller and start screwing around is we're going to go into the CLI. And we're going to do diff all, and we are going to save that out. That is a backup of our configuration. And if we screw things up, we can always put it back the way it was using this. And the next thing we want to do is type resource to get the current resource assignments. And I'm going to copy the resource assignments. And there is a great website here, Bix Pinio Setup Wizard, to help us do our resource reassignment. So we're gonna paste the resource output here and hit next. And then Bix is gonna help us do what we need to do. Now the next thing we gotta do is identify which pin we want to use for pin IO. And the LED strip pin is already taken. So which other pins might we consider? I've actually got a video all about what can you remap where? And I'll link that in the video description if you want more detail about that. But the next best option for using the pin IO function is gonna be a UART pin. And UART pins are tricky because they do not have their own timers and their own DMA channels. And if you remap one, you can cause others of them to stop working. But in this case, the pin IO function doesn't need its own DMA channel or timer so we can safely remap it. But we have to look and see which UARTs we aren't using. So we're gonna to go to the ports tab and we can see we've got UART six used for MSP UART, the MSP protocol uses both TX and RX, so we know that TX6 and RX6 are not safe to use. UART1 is being used for serial receiver. That's going to be the RX only, so in theory we could use TX1. And UARTs 2, 3, 4, and 5 are completely unused, so any of those are safe. Fantastic. So which one of these are going to be easiest to get at? It looks like like UART, I don't know, here's F port output. It's unclear what UART that is. ESC telemetry, it's unclear what UART that's mapped to. But here we've got TX4 and RX4, and those are just clear as day, and they're not being used for anything. So those are the pins we're going to use. So we'll go back to this pin IO setup wizard, and the flight controller pin that we want to use is, let's say, serial TX4. And we're going to activate it with 
Have we got any user modes already set up? I don't think we do. No, there are no user modes set up either. So we're going to activate that with user mode 1. And that's it. And we hit generate CLI. And this is what we need to put in the CLI in order to make that happen. Let's see how that works for us. Paste. Now there's one more thing we need to do and that is go to the modes tab and we need to set up that user mode one to trigger this. So we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna find user one. Here it is. We're gonna add range for user one. And then real quick, I'm gonna hide unused modes. Which aux channel is free? Aux one, three, four, three. Let's put this on aux two since aux two isn't being used for anything else. We'll drag that over here and let's just figure out on our controller which channel which switch is controlling that channel. I'm just going to flip switches until it moves. Um, oh, I have to plug in the battery so my receiver turns on. Okay. No, we're still fail-safe. Why are we still fail-safe? Why is it not turning on? Let's bring back. This is our... So let's just paste back in. What the hell? Let's paste back in our config dump. Put it back the way it was. Yeah, now it's back on again. What in the dickens? Like, how could it not even power up? <gasps> okay, so the only explanation I can come up with is that the Newbie Drone Infinity must have built-in PenIO switching to... Sw it has a built-in reel pit for switching the VTX off. It's the only possibility because that PinIO and, and user one don't work that way by default. They just don't work that way. So let's just use um, a PinIO two. No big deal. I don't care. So let's go back to our PinIO setup wizard and say PinIO one disabled. PinIO two. Shush. PinIO two is going to be serial TX four. Activate with. User 1, I guess so. Generate CLI. Paste that in. Save. Okay, so now when we flip this switch, we should get positive voltage on TX4. And when the switch is off, TX4 should go to 0 volts. Let's check that. Ground and TX4. Here's the problem. The native signaling level of the flight controller is 3.3 volts. So we're getting, it's doing what it's supposed to do, but we're only getting 3.3 volts out of it. And that would be enough to trigger a real pit, but it is not enough to trigger the FET that Ren just had in his closet somewhere and built a relay out of. So we need to get 5 volts out of this guy. And that's tricky because there is nothing on this flight controller that will switch 5 volts except for one thing. You see, the buzzer pads on a flight controller are switched 5 volts. Sort of. Actually, on the buzzer pads, the buzzer plus is just a 5 volt output. It's not switched at all. The way the buzzer works, and I'm not 100% sure why, it has something to do with the type of transistor that they use to switch it. On the, on the buzzer, the negative pad is switched. And what that means is that it can switch any voltage. The positive voltage could be 5 volts, could be, well, obviously there's an upper limit, but we can definitely switch 5 volts with the buzzer minus pad. But there's a problem. There's still a problem. Because what does the buzzer do when you switch the buzzer on and off? Well, let's try it. When we activate the buzzer, we should see between plus and minus. Yeah. You see how that voltage is like all over the place? The reason for that is that when you trigger the buzzer, it doesn't go beep. It goes beep, 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 beep. And that's no good if what you're trying to do is drive a motor. So here's what I want to figure out. Turn the buzzer off. Can we use the pin IO function to override the normal function of the beeper? And instead of activating the beeper mode and having it go beep, 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 could we just use the pin IO function to trigger the buzzer to just turn on and off with a switch. I think we can. Let's see if it works. What we want is pin IO2. 
The FC pin we want to use is beeper one, and we're going to activate it with user one. But just to be clear, we are not activating the beeper mode. We are directly controlling the pin itself. I think this is going to work. I think this is going to work. Moment of truth. I'm so excited right now. I really am. Fuck yeah. I got it. I fucking got it. I fucking got it. I got it, dude. It works. It works. It works really well. That's amazing. Where it was yesterday, all the wires were just strung out. But like the fact that like I was able to flip a switch and it turned on was amazing. So then I spent. Uh, I see the, the relay the there. Time. That's the relay on the side. Yeah, so yeah, up close. So you see the buck converter right here. The BEC mm -hmm. is basically taking my 6S voltage down to five volts because uh, the Nerf motors are running at five volts, as is the servo. Um, that's just coincidence to being to needing five volts out of the for the relay. Yeah. I mean, the relay, um, yeah. the relay could be switching any voltage. It just exactly. so happens, exactly. but it's it's signaled with 5 volts, and that's the key thing. Yeah. Sorry, I just turned on my remote, and I'm plugging in the drum. Okay. Okay. Works so far. Props on for safety. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. I probably shouldn't have my right next to my eyeball. Uh, okay, so I'm going to flip this switch right here on the corner. Is the, is the servo, like... Doing the trigger too? I'm gonna to turn on that as well, so you'll see. So, all right, motor's on. Now servo on. Unreal, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. I can't wait to see the video. I can't wait to see the video. All right. Well, Dude. suffice it to say, not that uh, not that quarter crew needs a needs a needs a boost from me, but uh, suffice it to say, there will be a link in the video description to your final video. <laughs> and it's been a real pleasure. Yeah, it's, it's been a real pleasure getting to meet you and 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 help you out and work with you. Likewise. Also, can I just point out real quick? It's a little bizarre chatting with you like this because is is this the same camera setup you use for your videos? Yeah. Okay, but it's, the fact that it's the same angle yeah. makes me feel like I'm just watching one of your videos, <laughs> except your video is talking back to me. It's really bizarre and kind of cool. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for getting me to this point. Uh, like, honestly, you kind of swooped in and saved the day. I think I might have called you Drone Jesus on oh, camera wow. at some point. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, I, I'm, I can't wait to see the episode. And as promised, there's a link to that video on Quarter Crew's channel right now down in the video description. Um, if you came here from that video, first of all, welcome. Glad to have you here. If it's your first time on my channel, this is kind of a weird video for you to see as your first video of mine. It's super nerdy and technical, and yeah, I do that. But I also do flight videos, vlogs, I'm very beginner focused, despite the fact that this video may not leave you with that impression. So I hope you didn't get turned off. I mean, you're here at the end of the video. You must not have gotten too turned off. I'll put some links to some of my favorite other videos of mine that I think maybe give you a little better sense of other things the channel's about down in the video description. Check them out. Thanks so much. And as always, as I say at the end of my videos, happy flying.